Well, good evening. Welcome to another live with Prophetic House of Prayer. Um, we are thankful for those of you that are jumping in and those that will be watching us by way of replay. I hope you have been having a tremendous week thus far. And I pray that the rest of your week will bring forth blessings, the peace of God, the wisdom of God, the rest of God. And whatever it is that you're believing God for in this season, I pray that he answers and give you instruction. Um, so we are getting ready to dive into the word and then go into prayer as we do every Tuesday. So right now, let's just go ahead and go before the throne of grace. So Father, we just come before your throne of grace and we're coming to obtain mercy. Father, we need your grace and we need your mercy to be upon us. Lord, as we get ready to dive into your word, let the spirit of revelation be present. That as the word is coming forth, it would come forth with clarity, with power, with understanding. And that your people, oh God, that they have their hearts are tender to be able to receive your word. We pray that as the word go forth, that it would fall upon good ground. That there would not be anything that would come to choke the word out or steal it as it is being planted and we just thank you that this will be a time in your presence that you would meet us here and that father it would be none of us but all of you that we would say what you would have us to say holy spirit we ask that you come and rest and sit amongst us we invoke your presence even now in the mighty name of jesus amen Amen and amen and amen. <clears throat> All right, we are here again, getting ready to speak the word of God and just drop what Holy Spirit has um, placed on my heart to talk about today. And it is it's a heavy topic, but it's also common. So it's heavy, but it's common. Um, it's, it's looked over, it's, it's glossed over, it's not really... Um, looked at as a big deal um, because most people believe that they're not in it. That's right. So uh, what Holy Spirit put on my heart today to talk about is idols, idolatry um, versus true worship. So idols, idolatry. So when we think about idols, most of the time people think about um, a statue and bowing down to a statue. Like you have a Buddha in their house or they may have some type of altar erected to another God. And you, we look at people like that, and the people that we look at like that, we say that they are idol worshipers. So in other religions, of course, the, the number one problem and issue with other religions is that they're worshiping other gods mm -hmm. other than our God. So a lot of religions have a lot of good principles. They have good principles and good morals. A lot of people that are in other religions, they're, they're very pious people. But the issue with them is that they're worshiping another God. They, they're in idolatry. So we understand those things. To that, to most believers, most Christians, that's common. But we fail to realize that we, as believers, possibly could be in idolatry as well. Uh, and not truly worshiping God like we think we should be worshiping God. And um, that's what I want to address tonight. So idols versus true worship. So I'm going to start in the scripture, uh, Ezekiel 14 and 4. It says, therefore, speak to them and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel has set up his idols in his heart. Every man in Israel. So we know the children of Israel are the children of Israel because they're God's chosen people. So these group of people, they wasn't, they knew better to put up physical idols for other people to see. 
because they understood my culture, my nation. We worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They understood that. So same thing in the church. We're not going to just put up an idol, you know, right in the middle of the church or right in the middle of our house and people come over. We're not going to do that. However, the prophet right here says you have set up idols in your heart. And it says you have put a stumbling block of iniquity before his face and you have come to the prophet's. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitudes of idols. So now the children of Israel will come before the prophets, but with these idols in their heart. So the prophets will respond to them according to their idols. How many know that is still happening today? You can have idols in your heart and a prophet can pick up those idols and prophesy to you according to the idols that you have erected in your heart. So now if you're a true prophet and you see that, you know that that's the thing that needs to be torn down, not the thing that needs to be exalted. But if you're a false prophet and you want to seem powerful and accurate, you will see those idols in those people's heart and you will speak to those very things. And that's a violation to God, but God would allow it because of the heart of the people. So people get prophecy hungry, especially on Facebook. You got all these Facebook prophets. They jump on and then people jump on to these Facebook prophets. They jump on with idols in their heart and they, the prophets pick it up and then they prophesy and they speak a word according to the idol. So we want to look at what an idol is to make sure we're not in it and get out of it if we're in it. So we also want to look at what it really is. We're going to go to Colossians 3 and 5. It says, mortify, therefore, the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil cons conspicuousness. That's <laughs> a, it's a King James word. I'm going to go to another translation. Boy, maybe you can pull that up for me. Another translation. I got to get that word right there for me. Colossians 3, 5. Uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. So right here, it says fornication. That's sex outside of marriage. Or, or the Greek term for fornication is um, actually pornea. So pornography is actually a form of fornication as well. And uncleanness, they mean that you have a defile, defilement in your heart, defilement in your mind, an un, unclean thought process, a mindset, um, inordinate affections. So inordinate affection could be um, a, a homosexual desire. Or it could be a, a, a affection for another um, person that is not your spouse, but you have an inordinate affection. You could have that for a sibling that you're around. You can have that for a, a particular group of people. So inordinate affection. You got it? Uh, yes. So we did it. This, this is Colossians 3, 5 in the Amplified Version. It says, so kill, deaden, mm. deprive of power, the evil desire lurking in your members, those animal impulses and mm. all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, mm. <laughs> unholy desires, <coughs> and all greed and covetedness. For that is idolatry, the deifying, of self mm -hmm. and other created things instead of God. So right there, it tells you, like most people believe that idolatry is a statue that you bow down to. It right, right there in Colossians, it tells you that these works of the flesh is idolatry. It is. So if you operating in your flesh, you are in idolatry. You have now exalted yourself 
or that thing above God. But we don't look at it like that. We we look at it as, well, I was just, I just had a desire in my heart that in order and affection. I just like that. I just like that person so much. But if that person is not your spouse, you now have an inordinate affection and you're in idolatry. Now you have lifted that person up as God in your life. Or if you want them to want you, you want them to desire you. Now you, you're saying that I'm God and I want them to have affection for me like I'm God. So that's an inordinate um, affection. So I want to go ahead and see I'm reading a couple of scriptures before I get into to the real meat of this. I want to go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, starting at verse 11. It says, As such were some of you, but you were washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. He said, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. He said, Meat for the belly and belly for me, but God would destroy it and them. But now the body is not for fornication, but the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will raise up us by his power, his own power as well. It says, for know ye not your body is the member of Christ, Shall I then take the member of Christ and make the member of a, har a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he who joins to a harlot is one body with her, for the two shall become uh, one flesh. It says, flee fornication. Every other sin a man does outside the body, he had committed fornication. Again, he who commits fornication sin against his own body. What? Know ye not your body, now here it is, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which are God's. So your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So when, you, when we think about a temple, we think about worship. So every other temple that has idols in it is a place of idolatry. So if you in your body is yielding to your flesh, your body becomes a temple of idolatry. Your body becomes a temple of worshiping other gods. That's the danger of this. So what, what is the meaning of uh, idolatry? So I wanted to go to um, the meaning of idolatry, and you can jump in anytime you want. Uh, so one of the Hebrew meanings of idolatry is an object of reverence, an object of reverence by means of divination. Hmm. So when I seen that, I was like, oh, uh oh, Lord, what you saying? An object of worship by means of divination. So we know that um, statues or objects have no power within themselves. Mm -hmm. So whatever you make an object, it becomes a means of divination. Now, what is divination? Divination is communication with spirits. To get information is divine. That's why it's divination. Communication that you can get information from. So God began to show me this, is that when you have idols in your heart, that idol, that altar, that is, it becomes an altar in your heart to where you can receive demonic communication. So you wonder why you may be going through demonic battles or you get these thoughts in your mind that seems to come out of nowhere. Holy Spirit said, check your idols. If you have thoughts coming into your mind that's impure, ungodly, unrighteous in a particular area, he said, check your idols. What have you made an object of reverence above God? Now, these objects of reverence can be anything. 
You can put a spouse as an object of reverence above God. You can put a child as an object of reference above God. You can put a job, a career, a position in the church. You can put a title as an apostle, a prophet, a teacher. You can make that an object of, of reverence higher than God. And that idol in your heart actually becomes a means of divination. So the enemy will begin to communicate to you around your idols. So say you have a child that you have exalted above God. The enemy is going to mess with your mind concerning that child because you have exalted that child above God. He's going to come and he's going to play with your mind. Say you made money and that's a big one. Money is a big one. You can't serve God and men. Money is probably the biggest, largest idol right now. So say money is that idol in your heart. Then the enemy is going to be able to play with your mind if you have a lot of it or a little bit of it. And when it's time to give and sow and it's time to sacrifice for the kingdom of God, if money is your idol, it's going to make it very difficult to do the things of God with money. It's going to make it almost impossible. Very, 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 very hard. Go ahead, baby. You got something? Um, I'm going to interject here um, because most of us don't consider that we can make ourselves an I idol. I was about to get that. <laughs> that we can make ourselves an oh idol. Oh, my God. Um, and that's what we read in Colossians 3, 5 in the Amplified Version where it says, um, the part where it says, for that is idolatry, the deifying deity. That's, that's God. God is a deity. The deifying of self. Of self. Of self. See, the Bible tells yeah. us that witchcraft is like the sin of, I mean, a rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is like that of idolatry. Uh -huh. Because when you are stubborn, that means you are refusing, you are rebelling against the things of God. You have then exalted you, mm -hmm. yourself, your feelings, your thoughts, mm -hmm. your emotions above the things of God. Yeah. When it says that we're not supposed to lift, we're not supposed to allow, allow for anything to exalt itself higher than mm -hmm. God. It's Knowledge speaking God. about thoughts, our yeah. opinions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are exalting that above God. God tells children to honor thy mother and thy father. And the child is like, no. Like, I deserve to be respected. I deserve not to be talked to any type of way. No, you don't know what they did to me. And I'm not going to respect them. You are now putting you, your feelings, your opinions, your thoughts above mm -hmm. what the word says concerning what you are to do and how you are mm -hmm. to honor your parents. Yeah. So now just imagine yourself. Just imagine this for a moment. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you were looking at yourself like we, we done stepped outside, we're in the spirit, and we see ourselves as a temple. Mm -hmm. And when you go inside of the temple, you're supposed to see the God in which <laughs> you're serving. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you see yourself. My God. Because that is whom you have placed above God and and again I say I don't think we realize how much we can do that mm -hmm. you know you have to really check your heart and check your opinions concerning every area of your life yes have you submitted that area to the will of God mm -hmm. have you submitted your will to God mm -hmm. even Jesus did that he said not my will but yours be done mm -hmm. so I mean, I, I think that's probably one mm -hmm. of the biggest things that we face is self mm -hmm. idolatry. Well, that's that's good. Um, I'm about to get into that next. We didn't even share our notes or anything. So, baby, you in there? Uh, that's the Holy Ghost. I love when that happens. Uh, so, the next word of idolatry here that I want to go over is a Hebrew word. It actually means images, blocks, stones. 
stones, blocks. I want you to think about that. Stones and blocks in your heart. Those are strongholds. Strongholds, stones, blocks, altars. Those are altars. So I want you to, like she was saying about thoughts, opinions, mindsets. These things are actually idols that has to be torn down, has to be um, demolished. So in the, in the New Testament, the word actually means image worship or the worship of an image. So we got object, we have image. So if you think about that in our time, the enemy is a um, evil genius ru ruler. He's a mastermind. So now in our age, we're always pumped with images, yes. images all the time. Why is the enemy always releasing images, commercials, TV, TikTok, reels, all of these things are being released, released. Why is he doing this? He's putting an image before you because he knows one of those images is your idol. You're going to come across an image of an idol that you have in your heart, or you're going to develop an affection for something that you see. Vanity. Now, vanity. vanity. So <laughs> this is why image, they say image is everything. Because everybody wants to look a certain way yeah. to attract a certain thing. So idolatry is not just you worshiping something else. You just said it is you also exalting yourself and wanting worship. Mm -hmm. This is why you see the world is trending towards calling themselves gods. Gods without knowing the true and living God, without yes. knowing the real God. They're exalting themselves, saying that they are God. This is a stage play, a setup for the Antichrist, who it says they're going to worship his image. Mm -hmm. So the world is already training our minds to focus on objects and images of worship. But we like, well, I don't worship. I don't worship other gods. We just told you, if you put your affection towards something other than God is higher than him, you are in worship. Yeah. You are exalting something higher than him. That was the Ten Commandments, the one and the main one. Put no other gods before me. Don't put it in my face. So, so you have other religions that will uh, worship the sun, the sun god. That's an object. The moon, the stars animals, all kinds of things. They will put it before God. Yes. Now it's body parts. Yeah, I'm going to get real now. So we see these images of women showing their behind all the time. That is an object of worship that's exalted in our time frame. And one of their dan the dance moves is the twerk. That's a worship. That's like, let me get worship from men. Yes. Watch me so I could receive worship from the twerk. That's what it is. And when you do that earlier, I said it becomes a place of divination. Mm -hmm. That's why spirits can come and they want to come and worship. Yes. They want to come and receive worship. Now, it's getting a little bit deep, but this exactly what is happening. Anything that you worship and exalt that's not God is a demon behind it. Yes. There is a spirit. Spirits gain access through worship. But yes. most people are like, I'm not worshiping anything. Yes, you are. Uh, you think it's innocent. No, it's not innocent. It's just ignorance. Yes. This is why we are here to reveal the truth. So, image yeah. worship. And jump in again if you want something. Go back down to my notes here. I want to make sure I say everything the Lord um, told me to say. And I, and, and I really, really pray that um, those that are listening, um, please do, you know, like and share so that this can circulate. Um, because there are so many people that are in worship 
outside of worshiping the true and living God. And like my husband just said, in ignorance, they have no idea. And like he was saying with the images that are constantly getting flashed of perversion, sexual images, mm -hmm. um, vanity. Mm -hmm. Vanity has become so huge. And it tags along with with um, putting yourself above mm -hmm. God. Because let's say, you know, for, you know, you, you have the body type or the body structure, whether you paid for it or it's mm -hmm. naturally there or you worked out to get it. <laughs> um, however you, you know, got it, you know, have the small ways and, you know, you're big behind or whatever the case may be. You are because of you know, what's being flashed. You're purposely going to go out there and find the clothes to be able to accent, you know, what you want to show off. Um, a sundress, because that's what men would say. Oh, you got to have the right type of body to wear the sundress. Mm -hmm. Or you wear something that's really tight fitted. Um, so that your behind can protrude out a little more. You're mm -hmm. just, you're exposing yourself. Why? Because I want the attention. I want for people to be able to look at me. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. Look at me. I am worthy of your attention. I am worthy of your exaltation of my body. It is worshiping of yourself, of your body, and you're receiving the worship from people. That's why you put it on social media. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll put it worship. on TikTok. You'll put it on the reel. <clears throat> you'll put it in Facebook. And let's be real. This only fans mess. Mm -hmm. That's the whole. Prostitution. Yes. <laughs> Put it right out there for you to be able to mm -hmm. solicit people to pay you so that they can mm. see what it well, is they I want to see, what they yeah. value. My because my like my husband has said previously before, how do we value God? The value that we place on him. Mm -hmm. The more value we place on him, the more we understand who he is, the more we oper he operates in our lives. But instead of placing value on God, you're placing value on the created uh, thing. Yes. The object. Instead of the creator. Mm -hmm. The object. Yeah. So in, in the world, we use these statements. Objectification. That's what it is. You make something an object of worship. Like women go through this all the time, uh, at, as well as men. Mm -hmm. Men get objectified as well, especially black men. And black men will receive it. Mm -hmm. And they take it and they will feel glory in the fact that they're being objectified because of, of a part of their body. I don't think I have to say it. That men. Beards, <laughs> beards have become yeah. a huge thing. So cool you know, their body, mm -hmm. if they work out. and, and Same it, thing. It's same thing. <laughs> Worship of the body. So now the reason why this is dangerous, and I, I'm speaking this to believers and those that pray, and you can pray in ways to help people in your prayer time because this still is a prayer movement. Yes. And those who Want, don't understand why you're going through certain things. Remember, when you are in idolatry, you open yourself up to divination. Divination is demonic communication. Yes. So demons begin to communicate and you build this altar in your heart through the idol. It, it works like a satellite, like a transmission. So it's like you attracting spirits and then you will try to get them away with sage. Even some believers do. I'm sorry. Uh, you would attract spirits based on how you are objectifying yourself and then you try to use sage to get rid of them. But that's a whole nother uh, whole conversation. Nother teaching. Yeah, you're using <laughs> witchcraft to get rid of spirits that you got through idolatry. It's never going to work. Uh, it doesn't work like that. However, you the, the way to get free, and the Holy Spirit showed me the way to get free. So I'm going to leave you hanging. The way to get free is to really be honest about your idols. If you know you have exalted your own self, your body, your image above God and you're a believer, just check your heart and repent. If you know you have put money above your relationship with God and God, you know, you, you know you've done that. You know your idols. You put your spouse above God. 
you 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 put your house and some people in their house above God. You know your idols. The moment this is what Holy Spirit, the potential of this is when you begin to destroy the idols, it stops the demonic communication. And I want to, it shuts them down. I want to bring it in real quick mm -hmm. for those who may not understand what we're talking about, and if you don't understand how divination can happen. I, I, I want to take you back to the Old Testament before um, our bodies was the temple. Uh -huh. There was an actual temple that the priests had to enter in. And, and mind you, they had to go through a ritual before a ritual. they could enter yeah. into the mm -hmm. holies of holies to be able to go before God because that's where they met God. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. So that's the spirit of God within that temple for the priest to be able to have communication with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So now let's fast forward it to the New Testament. Uh -huh. Christ has died. Yes. And now we that's are the good. final resting place of God. We are now the temple. So being that we are now the temple, the veil has been rent. Uh -huh. There is no middleman. Yes. So now we have direct communication mm -hmm. with the spirit yes. of God. So yes. in the same you way that we have the, the direct communication <laughs> with the spirit of God, you can have direct communication with another spirit. Yes. So that is how you can be in idol worship and have demons talking to you. Mm -hmm. And you, they're speaking first, per, first person. And you would think it's your own thoughts mm -hmm. because of there is your own idols. But they are controlling your life. The moment you exalt something above God, that's the moment they're coming into your life. Yes. The moment you make something higher than God, I don't care if it's your own child. The moment you do that, the moment the enemy is going to take advantage of that and he's coming in to your life. So we have to repent of our idols. We have to tear it down and we have to rebuild the altar of God in our heart. Yes. You got to rebuild that stone of worship in your own heart. You got to say, my heart is only for the worship of God. Yes. For God I live, for God I die. Jesus said you can't put child, wife, uh, anything before him. He said you're not even worthy to be my disciples if yes. you put family before me. Why did Jesus say that? Because he understood idolatry. <laughs> That's why he said that. He understood that the Father should be loved with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Yes. First, then you love your neighbor as you love yourself so it's time to repent of our idols tonight yes. and that's what we're going to begin to pray about whatever properties feel led to pray about but i feel like we need to tear down some idols yes tonight yes in jesus name so let's go before the throne of grace y'all i i just want to be able to say this we have to fight to keep a heart and a mindset of prayer yes it's not easy to always go before the throne of grace because it's work. And not only is it work, it puts us in a position where we have to mm -hmm. realize where we are. That's the place where we have to be honest with God. And sometimes that is a little difficult because you have to be real. Mm -hmm. And it's like, God, I'm really, I really am that person. Mm -hmm. I really have been oh, that treacherous. Really I really have been in idolatry. I really have been rebellious to you. Yes. And and mind you, God has given me, I come from a line of prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. That's what, this is what my family does. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I can feel where, yes, I do need to pray, and mm -hmm. but my body is hurting or mm -hmm. I'm tired or I've had a long day. And it's like, God, can I do it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. But let me just encourage you. It's in those moments. It's in those moments where you really need to get before the throne of grace yes. because that is when God is going to meet you. That is when he's going to move into your situation because I'm going to be honest, y'all. We've had some stuff going on today that has had my heart a little heavy and I've had to be in the face of God 
throughout the day as much as I can to be able to shake it off because it wants to try to hold you down. It wants to try to weigh you down. It mm -hmm. wants to try to oppress you yes. so you don't bust through, so you don't hold on to the faith that you have, that what you're believing God for. The enemy is always trying to get you out of a position or out yes. of a place of prayer. But let me encourage you to continue to fight, to continue to press in, to continue to go before the throne of grace, even if all you can say is God have mercy. If that's all you can say is God have mercy. Have mercy. Those Bye. few Bye. little words is breaking through the Bye. atmosphere Bye. that Bye. the enemy Bye. is Bye. attempting Bye. to Bye. weigh Bye. you down Bye. with. God have mercy. And the more you keep saying it, you'll begin to realize that God is strengthening you to be able to come before his throne of grace boldly, to be able to pray, to give your supplications, to give your petitions, to bring what you are requesting before him. And then before you know it, you done been praying for Bible an hour. He done strengthened your inner man and he's using you now as an intercessor because now it's no longer about you. Now it's about the will of the Father. God, whatever it is you want me to pray for, I'm here. Use me. Use my mouth. Allow for your will to be confessed, professed in the earth through my mouth. So this is what we are getting ready to do. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we're coming before your throne room yes. of grace to obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. Mm. To obtain mercy. Mercy. Father, I ask that you forgive us for every way that we have stood in idolatry, every way. in the ways that we have placed ourselves, our own motives, my, my. our own thoughts, yes. our own opinions yes. above your word, oh my, God. My, my, Father, yes. forgive us for the ways that we forgive have us. exalted other people. Ah, we have my, exalted oh, personalities, oh, even God. those, oh God, forgive that us. are within the word, that my, we my, have my, trusted my, 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 more my, 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 in a man because my, of the my, gift yeah. that you gave them. My, We've trusted more in them than we, oh, than we have trusted in you, than we have trusted in your word. Oh, Father, God. we ask that you forgive oh, us for these things. Us. Forgive us for looking at my, money my, 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 more Lord. valuable than your yes. word. Oh, God. Forgive yes. us, oh God, so, even for valuing Lord, your Lord. gifts that you have yes. given us more my, 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 than my, my, the gift Lord. giver. Lord. Forgive Lord. us, oh God, for the way that we have exalted my, 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 and honored the creation more than the creator. Father, I'm asking that you turn us around, turn our turn focus back to you, that we will focus our prayers, that we will focus our attention, that we will focus our affections, that we will focus our thoughts on the creator, on you, oh God, because you are the lover of our souls. You are the lily in the valley. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You are the light. You are the father Father of glory. Father, we honor you today. We, honor we you. put you back in your rightful Mato place glory, in our God. hearts. We, we put you back in the rightful Mato place, Mato oh God, Mato in Mato our Mato. temples. Yes, we are the temples, temples of you, Mama, oh God. Let you be exalted yeah, in yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah, us yeah, use yeah. our bodies to glorify, oh, to God. exalt your name. Oh, Let our faculties God. and our members, oh God, Mama, be I, used to exalt you. Yes. Be used Used to exalt you. Let every stronghold, oh Mama, God, Mama, that is within us, Mama, that's in our minds, that's stronghold. not of you, let it be torn down Lord, now in the stronghold. name of now, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, By the word. I plead the blood over the minds, over the hearts, over the thoughts of your people, those that are on this line, those that are watching the replay, oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus, and I command the enemy to cease his activity, to cease his maneuvers, I bind you hand and foot, release the will of God's people, release their will in the name of Jesus, release their will, their minds, their thoughts in the name of Jesus. I tear down every 
family my, my, tradition my, 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 that is not of God. I tear it down in the name my, of my, Jesus. My, 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 Let everything that has been exalted oh, above Jesus, your word be torn down in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we're tearing down these altars, as we are eliminating and destroying strongholds, oh Father, let your healing. Your healing. Be released oh, in the name of Jesus. Let your not deliverance, go your healing, not healing of the mind, healing oh, of the heart, not. healing of the emotions of oh God in the name of Jesus. For those that have been heavy, for those that have been burdened down, oh God, for those that have been holding things within their hearts, not knowing what to do with it, oh God. Let the God of all peace that passes all understanding, oh God, come now in the name of Jesus and heal them. Every wound. Right. Oh God, every remove every, every, hurt every hurt in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, my return my us my back my to my true my worship. My you my said my those my that worship you must worship you in and spirit and, and in truth. truth. So we my come, oh God, my my and my worship my the my spirit my of my truth. My we worship you, oh God. We get rid of every false ideology that has come up. Yeah, let's pray for that right there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Today, we're going to a miracle and a sign today. Mantaraba, yes. three tumors. We ask that God that heals yes. and delivers will go into your body. That the next time you go back to the doctor, the tumors will be gone. I release, I release, be healed now. Lift your hands and receive that healing now. Every tumor, every spirit of infirmity that's creating them, I command the tumors to shrink now and every spirit that's been causing it to go. In the name of Jesus, receive the healing by mercy. It's the mercy of God that's going to touch, that's touching your body even now. His mercy. In Jesus' name. And Father, right now I pray a special prayer over my cousin. That because she joined us tonight, that because she's on this live, oh Father, I pray that you visit her even now. Visit now. Allow for her to feel your peace and your love. Surround her like a shield, oh God. Even now. I command that every, everything that needs to come together. Yes. Mama. Within her lungs. Oh, yes. Right Come now. together now in the, in name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. That she will no longer go into Mama. rejection. Mama. That she will no longer, oh God, have to go Mama. back and forth. But allow for her to come to Mama. know Mama. you as healer. As healer. As healer. In oh the name God. of Jesus. Healer of her lungs and healer of her heart. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let her receive it oh in the name God. of Jesus. We thank you for it. <laughs> we thank you for it. And devil, I command you? you to take your hands off of her. In the name of Jesus. I cancel your assignment now. now in the name of Jesus. I come the in the authority that has been now. given unto ma, me ma, by ma, Jesus ma, Christ ma, of Nazareth. Now. That mm. your assignment is no longer. Ah, feel the healing that it grace. has been the obliterated in the name of Jesus. Feel the healing grace. My God. My God. I feel it the is not grace. your will, my God, God, for her to continue to go through what my she's been going through. But it is your will to yes. see her whole. And Father, we ask for this sign. Yes. <laughs> we ask for this sign. Ah, we ask. Let it be made my, 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 my. manifest in her body in the name of Jesus. Even now. I release mm -hmm. healing to every person yeah, that's every on person. this line. My healing. That healing every grace. system that you have will come into alignment grace. with the word of God. Mm -hmm. 
That your circulatory yeah, system, yeah, vascular, digestive, yeah, nervous, yeah, respiratory, your yeah, muscular, yeah, uh, even down to the bone, your tendons. Yes. yes. I command the grace of God to come grace upon you again. now. Ah, yes, grace. It's released in the yes, name released. of Jesus. It's released. it's released. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against any spirit that will attempt to implant doubt that is not going to work. I come against every lying spirit that will attempt to say that the word of God doesn't work. Allow for your faith to rise up and grab a hold of the healing that you need tonight. And don't let it go. Command every spirit of infirmity to flee your atmosphere now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. And I could I could feel the Jesus. healing grace. The healing grace is here. And before I got on this live today, Holy Spirit said He was going to confirm this live by miracles. Okay. So, Father, as you spoke that, establish your word now. Yes, God. Yes. And work Jesus. miracles. Mantukuba. Murubukubaya. Confirm it now. Yes. All you have to do is receive. And any other person that may watch this live, if you have any condition Jesus. in your body, the Lord is confirming this live. He Jesus. says, just get rid of your idols. That's why he had me speak on this word today. He said, just get rid of your idols. Yes. He is your God and he is your healer. Yes. He is your healer. And if there's anybody that wants to rededicate their life to Jesus or be saved in this moment, his grace and his power is here yes. to save you. He came, he died, but he rose. The father rose him up. Yes. So just say, Lord, I thank you for you dying for my sins yes. and even being beat for my healing. I thank you, Father, for you rose Jesus from the dead on the third day on my behalf. And I rededicate my life to that truth. And I receive Jesus into my heart. And if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you can receive him. And I release the Holy Spirit upon you. The Holy Spirit of power, comfort, reassurance. You'll stand by. Receive the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in other tongues now. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Ah. Uh, Thank you. So we are, we love y'all. We are so very grateful um, for you to join us in the work that God has given us. Um, this is Prophetic House of Prayer. Ah, uh, if I could just share with you the story of how this all got started. Mm -hmm. when how, it, tell it? <laughs> how it stopped <laughs> for a while and it. then and then God brought it back. <laughs> and it like came back with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. Um so we're thankful. We're thankful for your life. We thank you for your prayers, your encouragement, your support. Um, we do this every Tuesday, and I'm so very thankful because every Tuesday, Holy Spirit comes and joins us. He comes and sit amongst us. And y'all, if 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 God didn't show up, I could I wouldn't do it. Amen. I could only do this because I want for the manifestation of God to be made manifest in your life. Yes. He said that these signs shall follow them that believe, and that is what I'm looking for. Yes. 
because I believe. So I believe that miracles, that healings, that deliverance is going to take place, that demons have to flee, have to leave your life because the power of God is coming upon you. I believe that the, the very life-giving power of God has to flow through your body because you have received him. And because you have received him, there's no demon, there's no devil, there's no spirit of infirmity that can come and just sit and stay. It has to go in the name of Jesus and everything it attempted to destroy and mess up has to be restored in the name of Jesus because God is the God of life. And I speak life to everyone that is watching this live and that's watching the replay. I expect for the hand of God to come and touch your situation and for life to be made manifest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, this is again, this is what God has given us. This is a prayer movement. And we are soon, soon going to be coming together to tear some stuff down and to abolish the enemy's kingdom. What he has set up in our bloodline, in our families, we're coming for everything that the enemy has not only stolen from us, but stolen from the body. We're coming for it. And so if you have the mind to want to come and kick the devil in the face and take everything that he has taken and sevenfold, because we're going to come, we're going for the spoils. We're going for the good stuff. If you want to be a part of that, email us, prophetichouseofprayer7 at gmail.com and just email us and say, I want to partner so that we can keep you updated on what we are getting ready to do because see, we, get, we, we ain't playing, y'all. We are soldiers in the army of God and we're coming to destroy his kingdom. If you would like to sow into the ministry, it's up on the screen. You can definitely do so if God leads you. We thank you for the support of those who have given already into the ministry. And I decree that it is returning, that it is going to be a perpetual thing that God is going to continue to bring back because he, his word says he gives seed to the sower. So because you've sown, it's decreed you're getting more seed. Mm -hmm. That means more money is coming. We have to advance the kingdom and do the will of the Father. We love you. We thank you for joining us. Next week, same back channel, same back time on a Tuesday at 7 p.m. Be praying for us, yes. praying with us. If you have a prayer request and you're watching the live, you can put it on the screen. Or if it's private, you can definitely email us at prophetichouseofprayer7 at gmail.com. You can send your prayer request there. And we will definitely go before the throne of grace on your behalf. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Until we meet again. We love you. Be blessed. blessed.